Hi! I'm Melissa Case from Hat to Hem, and today we're looking back. So, this year felt very productive and very not at the same time, and I think it's because this year felt particularly long. Bernie Sanders' mittens were this year. The boat getting stuck in the Suez Canal was this year. At least I think it was. Yeah, right, it was this year. It was in March. Was it March? It feels like it was longer than that, but also more recent than that. I don't know. But we're not here to talk about winter wear and global news. Or at least I don't think that's why you clicked on this video. If you did, I'm, I'm sorry. But you're probably not going to get more of that than this video. I'm going to take you through my year, what I made, what I did, and at the end we are going to add everything up to see what it looks like. Okay, starting in January, I kicked off my year with a year review video, like I am now. Now these admittedly are not the most interesting videos in the world to make, but I do like to do these because I like starting the year off by looking back on what I've accomplished because when you are in the moment, it doesn't feel like you're doing very much sometimes. And these videos are a good way to keep me motivated for the upcoming year. Plus, I think it's kind of nice to start the new year off with a sense of accomplishment. So after that video was posted, I launched into my first project of the year, which was a Bridgerton dress, which I sewed in pretty much eight hours. I did it in a length it took to rewatch Bridgerton in the background. Uh, actually, it was renewed for a second season, so I should say it was the first season of Bridgerton because I have no idea when in the future people are gonna be watching this, if at all. Anyway, it was a very easy stash project. Uh, it was all made from materials that I already had in my house and it was a pretty quick one to make because as I said, it only took eight hours. It wasn't like a uh, month long project that I was tired of by the end. It was very easy to get through it quickly. It ended up being my most viewed new video of 2021 and I think it was my fourth most viewed video of the whole year. So I'm gonna say it was a good time investment. Next was an out of character video. At this point, I was six months pregnant and I was rapidly running out of things that I could wear. So I found some fabric I liked, I found a pattern I liked, and I decided that I was going to make myself two new dresses. That probably doesn't sound like it was a big deal, but it was because I don't do modern sewing at all. It's not something I've ever had luck with. On top of that, these dresses were going to be made out of knit fabrics because, you know, changing body, it made more sense but I wasn't really used to working with knits. So I ended up kind of learning how to sew knit fabrics like the week before I sewed these dresses. <laughs> Luckily, I think it worked out. I ended up sewing them up in two different ways, one for sewing machine, one for serger, and I think the video turned out pretty well. It was a challenge though, because it was my first sponsored video ever. So there was a lot of pressure on that. I was working with an unusual fabric and an unusual style. And on top of all that, the night before I was supposed to present this video to Anne Louisa Jewelry for approval, my editing software decided it didn't want to work anymore. So I ended up having to teach myself how to use DaVinci Resolve very, very quickly to throw this video together to send to a sponsor. It was so stressful, but I think the videos turned out well. And I actually ended up letting my viewers vote to see which dress they wanted me to wear to my baby shower. So that was kind of nice. You likely won't see too much modern sewing from me though because it's not it's not something I particularly enjoy doing but I'm glad I gave it a shot. So my next video was a somewhat unplanned tutorial. I did not have this in my lineup of videos I was hoping to release however when I was working on the Bridgerton dress, there was a particular method to inserting the placket that I hadn't really done before. And I figured my viewers might not have done it before. So I thought I'd make a tutorial about it in case it could help anyone. Uh, the reason this placket was unusual was because it was in the middle of a panel of fabric. It wasn't on a seam. And I thought mm, maybe people could use this. And it turned out people could. I got a lot of very positive comments saying that it was exactly what they needed and that they had been looking for something like that. So I'm glad I did it. So my next project did not make it into a video, but I was altering some wedding dresses around this time, which is not something I recommend when you are entering into your third trimester of pregnancy and it is very difficult to get down on the floor and back up. 
I just wanted to make a little extra money before the baby came, which worked out for one of them. The other dress wasn't done until after the baby was here, but I'm glad I did them. It was an experience. Wedding dresses are ridiculous. Uh, the layers that are involved and the techniques that they use to make these dresses is, it's, it's insane. And I, uh, it's not something I want to do too often, but I am glad I did it. I was glad I was able to see close up how these dresses were made. It was very interesting, but it was also a little bit of a pain <laughs> because wedding dresses are not fun to alter <laughs> at all. During this, I was also working on the dress that I would wear to my maternity photo shoot, which ended up getting, I think it was postponed twice. So I was quite far along by the time these videos were taken. I decided to experiment. I did a fantasy style gown and I did a fantasy cloak to go with it. And I love the cloak. It was uh, a little bit of a pain to make because it was very large with a lining and I don't like doing bag linings anyway. So this thing was, it was annoying. However, I love the way that the, the appliques look on it. So it was probably my second favorite thing that I made last year. The dress, however, um, meh. I, I think it looked nice, but I would have liked to have gone a little crazier with it. It wasn't really an option because of my energy level, my budget, and the time constraints, and just the materials that were available. I wasn't able to exactly go very strongly in a direction I wanted, which was a shame. I would have liked to have done, just, I would have liked to make it a little different, been like a different shade of blue, just a little more detail work, but it wasn't in the cards and that's okay. Uh, the picture still looked good. The photo shoot was still a lot of fun and I'm glad I did it. It's just, even if it didn't quite fit what I was hoping it would be, I still think it turned out nice. So I can't complain. And also I felt very elegant with those sleeves. I want another fancy dress with those sleeves because that was really fun. Those videos weren't posted until a couple months later. I had to wait to get the pictures back. By the time I was editing these videos, I had a newborn. I wasn't loving the idea of editing two similar videos back to back. So I ended up taking my footage from the cloak and I experimented a little bit. I did not do a video with voiceover and try to explain this is what I did, this is what I did next, that kind of thing. I actually tried to take my footage and set it to music to try and just make it look a little more interesting. It was a quick video and it was a lot of fun to edit. Trying to get the clips to match up with the music was a fun little challenge and I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm glad I did that. So I was working on the wedding gowns. I was working on my maternity photo shoot dress and I didn't really have any footage to post right then. So I ended up going into my backlog and I turned back to Historic Philadelphia. Uh, if you were not following me last year, Historic Philadelphia was a very large commission that I took on in 2020 that lasted for several months longer than anticipated. And now editing the videos of that project has taken years, literal years. I posted my first one at the end of 2020. I was able to post two videos throughout 2021 and I still have two more to go that are hopefully coming out in the first half of this year because I just want to be done with this commission. It won't die. It's been around for so long and I am frankly at this point I'm tired of it. You ever have a book where you feel like you need to get it done because you started it but you really want to read something else but the book just won't end? It feels like you are it feels like you always have 300 pages to go. That's where I'm at with this historic Philadelphia commission. Uh, not so much the commission, but the videos because it's just taking forever. Like I don't, I don't particularly enjoy editing them. They were all filmed before I had a camera. They were all filmed on my phone. Sometimes the audio is not the best just because of microphones and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't remember everything I did. So if I do a voiceover with those videos, I actually have to go back and read the instructions of the patterns to try and figure out what I was doing at that moment. And it's not a good time, <laughs> but I started it and I'm going to finish it. And like I said, those videos will be out later this year. And then I can move on with my life. <laughs> Between the two historic Philadelphia videos, I had a very big time sensitive project I had to do. I had to paint the baby's nursery. <laughs> and of course I can't just be normal and paint all four walls and call it a day. I had to paint a ridiculous mural on one of the walls. I based it on Disneyland's It's a Small World. I really like how it turned out, but it was pretty much a week of just crazy 
painting and getting it done and I didn't have time to edit the other Historic Philadelphia video. So what I did was I filmed myself painting the nursery. I edited that together very quickly and I posted that and luckily my viewers liked it. I was a little nervous about posting something that was just kind of completely out of left field and luckily people liked it and I'm grateful <laughs> because otherwise there was no video that week. Honestly it was fun switching things up and it was easy to edit so win-win for me. So while I was working on the nursery and getting everything together I was chatting with some other costumers that I'm friendly with and that's how I found out that a bunch of costumers were independently planning to do Disney related projects that year and when they realized that they're like oh why don't we just all release them together? That makes sense. Cause then the algorithm picks it up and everybody gets confused. I'm sure you all saw the historical Disney dresses that were being posted a couple months ago. It wasn't an actual collaboration. It was just, well, it kind of was, but it was mostly just luck. Now, I was literally working in my Disney themed nursery when I found this out. So clearly this was a project that would be completely in my wheelhouse. However, I was rapidly approaching my due date and I knew that making a project for myself didn't make sense. So I was kind of sad. I was very sad that I wouldn't be able to participate until I remembered I had a half scale dress form and I realized I would be able to make a half scale project and potentially at least start it before I had the baby. Then I could have the baby and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, I mean, having a baby is a big deal, but I'd be able to have the baby and be able to go back to the project without worrying about a rapidly changing body. So with that in mind, I just had to pick my Disney character and I chose Lady from Lady and the Tramp because my dog Maisie is obsessed with that movie. She loves watching the live action one. The original animated one is one of my favorite Disney movies. It, it just made sense. Once my fabrics were picked out, I was able to quickly paint a concept sketch of what my idea was and I very quickly edited that so I could get it scheduled to post a couple days after my due date at that point. It was a bit of a rush to get it all done but it was worth it because I like I said I wanted to make sure I posted around the time everybody else was so that people would actually see my video. It's a little silly but the other reason I had for wanting to post it early was because I figured it's one of the classic Disney movies. I wanted to make sure that I kind of showed that this was my original idea. Not so much that I thought of it first, but I wanted it to be clear that I wasn't copying off of anybody. So anyway, video was quickly edited and scheduled to go live the following week. And I can't stress how absolutely rare it is for me to get a video done early. I'm usually editing these uh, the day before I post them. Not completely, but usually I'm finishing up the editing process and then it posts the next day. So the fact that I got it done early is an achievement. And it's a good thing I did because between scheduling the video and it going live, I had the baby. It was a very difficult delivery. There were some complications and after six and a half hours of pushing, we decided I just it wasn't working, I need to get a C-section, which then ended up having additional complications and it all kind of just ended up with me and the baby recovering in the hospital for about a week. We are both doing much better now. My son is a lively, bright, very judgmental eight month old. That kid gives the most impressive side eye that I've ever seen in my life. To add to all of that, I also ended up losing access to my Facebook account for about a month. I did eventually get it back, but when I got it back, I had lost access to my Facebook page. Uh, not my personal one, but the, uh, the Hats of Hem one. I tried making another one, and then I, for some reason, lost access to that one as well, so at that point, I just gave up. So if you were one of the people who was commenting and liking all my stuff on Facebook, I am so sorry that I am unable to post anymore. I really enjoyed interacting with you, and I do miss it. Like, I'm not one to just give up, but it just... It just wasn't working and I'm sorry. I do hope that you at least follow me on Instagram also. And if you don't, please comment on my videos down below because I want to keep talking with you. I really enjoyed that interaction and frankly, I miss it. So if you ever have anything to say, please just leave a comment because I love talking to people. My next three videos were, they were just filler. I wanted to maintain my upload schedule for as long as I could. So I kind of just had to post what I was able to and I was recovering from a very complicated C-section. So what I could manage wasn't very much. <laughs> I did post the baby's birth announcement and then I did an unboxing video where I 
uh, opened up a care package that was sent to me from other Cos-tubers and still thinking about that care package makes me so happy. I know it's kind of hard to tell when you're on that side of the screen, but a lot of us do have genuine friendships with each other. I mean, everyone in my group, we're all very friendly with each other. Some of us we grew very close during uh, everything, uh, the pandemic and every, you know, all that. When I found out I was pregnant, these were some of the first people I told. They were some of the first people to see the nursery on our video chats. Like, I announced the birth to them before I announced it to like the whole extended family and everything. So these people are important to me and it's really nice to see that I am also important to them. Anyway, uh, the next video I posted was the tour of Green Gables on Prince Edward Island that I filmed on our honeymoon. My husband had suggested that I post it a while ago and I just never got around to it. And then suddenly there was one morning where I was just kind of laying in bed feeling bad that I had missed my upload date because my video was set to go live a couple hours from then. And then I just remember like sitting up and thinking, oh, the Green Gables video. <laughs> So I literally edited that video together in probably about two hours and it was set to go live that day. And I'm, I'm very shocked that I thought of it. I'm glad I did and people enjoyed it. So worked out. All right, so now we're gonna get into the personal stuff. It was around this time that I realized that I would not be able to return to my job at the library. My husband and I talked it over and we realized that it didn't make financial sense for me to work just for the majority of my paycheck to go towards childcare, especially during a global pandemic. So I ended up having to make the difficult decision to leave my job. I had been working on getting my real estate license anyway, just as a way to make income on the side. I actually became a realtor just a couple of weeks before the baby was born. I am hoping to put more focus on building up my business later this year when uh, my mom retires and she's able to watch the baby a little bit more. If you live in the Philadelphia area and you're looking to buy or sell or you know somebody who is, let me know because I would love to help them. <laughs> I didn't mean this video to turn into a other business pitch, I am sorry, but really let me know. Anyway, because I was giving up my regular income, I was kind of forced with a choice. I could either stop sewing or I could find a different way to try and make some money. So I made the very scary decision to start a Patreon. That was actually almost as scary as it was deciding to quit my job, <laughs> which doesn't make sense, I know, but it was because it's a commitment. I have to make sure that I post to my patrons and give them enough content where they feel like that they are receiving something in return to their contributions and that's stressful it is i enjoy doing it but it it was very stressful to think okay how am i going to be able to do this with a newborn and luckily the few times where i've kind of fallen flat they were very understanding anyway I have six subscribers as of right now and I'm grateful for them. <laughs> I do post some exclusive updates towards videos. Sometimes I post recipes that I've made that I think they'd like, which is not necessarily why they signed up, but here we are. I was able to post four extra videos for them this year. I also occasionally post polls whenever I'm trying to make decisions about future projects. Uh, usually they're not things that I can act on right away, but it's stuff that I'm taking into account later, like voting on the color of my corset that I'm planning on making later in the year or, you know, little things like that. Some tiers actually also allow for a video chat uh, between me and the patrons and they get to see me ramble in real time. So that's fun, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I do have more plans for it. It's It's been a learning curve trying to figure out what's good to post, what isn't good to post, stuff like that. But I do have some plans. Uh, mainly because the update videos can be, you know, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not because there's some, some moms are busier than others, some are not. So, uh, I do have plans for more things. In February, I'm planning to post a video of analysis of the Mary Poppins dress that I made. So, uh, just kind of look at the original pictures and kind of break down, you know, the little details I saw and what I decided to add to my dress, what I wasn't able to, that kind of thing. So. Hopefully they like that video. I also have a lot of projects this year that I'm planning on that will also involve polls. 
So I really hope that I am giving value to my patrons. All right, there we go. I apparently talked too much and my battery died. So I feel like this is gonna be a video I'm gonna have to edit a bit to get it down to a reasonable length. I posted my two maternity sh shoot videos and then I received a comment asking about the way I knotted my thread during the hand sewing parts of the video. The result was a very thought out tutorial video that was less than two minutes long. I mean, this thing had an outline, it was scripted, it had a shot list. It was surprisingly detailed. And I like to think that that came across in the video. It was very interesting to try and take something and kind of break it down like step by step, motion by motion, especially when it's something that I just kind of do without thinking. I mean, it, the result was I made the video way more difficult than I needed to, but it was fun. You see, usually when I make a video, I film all the sewing stuff first. And then later I go back and I try to see how I can make it into a video. I script a voiceover, I edit it all together, and hopefully a video comes out of it. In this case, I actually kind of worked in reverse and I did the script first and I planned out each shot and I was able to adjust as I went along. And uh, the result I think was a fairly good tutorial. And I'd like to do more videos like that in the future if I come up with any ideas where it would work. All right, so then my next video showed how I made the undergarments for Lady, which was important because I wanted to make sure I got that silhouette because otherwise it's just like, you know, a normal dress form. It doesn't really, you know, there's really so much you can do. So I wanted it to have that narrow waist illusion and all that. I actually started this video a couple of days before I had the baby. My last picture on my phone before, you know, taking a picture of the baby was actually from this project. <laughs> I did the course of cover, I did the hip padding. I had a baby and then two months later I finished it. <laughs> so that was a little bit interesting, but I got it done and it led to my favorite project of the year, which was the lady costume. I loved the colors, I loved the style, I loved everything about it. I love that it actually looked the way I pictured it. <laughs> that was really nice because as we know, sometimes that doesn't happen. And more than that, it made me realize that these are types of projects that I want to be doing. I want to be able to make a costume easily without having to worry too much about the way it's gonna fit me and all that. And if my body's gonna change, and if it's worth it. The idea of making it on a small, you know, half scale dress form, knowing that it's always gonna be able to fit was really nice. And making something that was inspired by something else that I love that had nothing to do with sewing was really nice. I'm sure there's a better word for it, but right now that's just the best way I can think. It was really nice. And I'm hoping to be able to do more projects like that this year. So I was trying to film the final shots of Lady so you could see the final project. And I was running into an issue because the dress was just kind of blending in with this brick wall. The only thing that really popped was the belt. And there was a lot more to this costume, just a belt. So I made the random decision to make a half scale wall. I went to the store. I bought a trifold presentation board. I got some removable wallpaper and I made a little background for my dress. And I'm glad I did because I think it really helped with the pictures. And then because I don't know how to do something without filming it, I also made a video about how I made that wall. I'm glad I made it. I think the video is cute. And it was the last video that I made before I had two months of absolutely crazy sewing. September and October were taken up by two very big projects that prevented me from even having time to really edit a video because they were just that involved. The first project was a big commission. It was a Sabella costume based off of the costume in A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. It consisted of a petticoat and corset, both of which are also in the show. So I had to make them as accurate to the show as I could. It also included a very involved underskirt stripes going in every direction and just, it, it was a lot. I did a overskirt that involved beaded fringe that I had to make myself and it also had a bodice. Now I had made this costume before and I promised myself I would never make it again because it was it's frankly very annoying to make <laughs> because of all the details and all the different things going in directions and it's a lot and I broke that promise to myself and I made this dress anyway and I didn't necessarily regret it but it was it was a lot. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of patience. 
and I was very grateful when it was done. <laughs> I actually think this one was better than the one that I made last time, but it was, um, it was still a lot. <laughs> And I know I keep saying that, but that is really just the best way to describe the stress. It was a lot. Really, the only video I was able to do was a little Q&A of a trip that I took to Winter Tour to just kind of walk around and uh, answer some questions from viewers. And it was a nice little break, and at that point, it was actually really nice to just edit a video because I missed it. Halloween costumes, especially because we had other plans that meant that I actually had less than a week to make these costumes. So for Halloween, we were Mary Poppins, Bert, and a baby penguin. And I loved our costumes. <laughs> they were a lot of fun. It was a little stressful to try and get that dress done in a week. And it was also stressful to have to try and paint the jacket in addition to getting the dress done. <laughs> but it was worth it. We were an absolute hit on our street. It was very fun to make and it was very memorable for our son's first Halloween. Even though he won't remember it, we always will. So November was spent editing the Q&A video, the Mary Poppins video, and also one other project that was shot during the Sabella commission, but it wasn't posted until after the Mary Poppins video, so. So my last video of the year was my part of the pocket swap that was organized by Jeanette of A Perfect Touch. We all made pockets for each other and we all exchanged them and it was, it was a nice little project. It was very quick. It was practical, which was nice. And it was nice getting to know more people in the community. I feel like most of the people that I really talk to now are the people who are in the Secret Santa exchange. So being part of another collaboration and getting to meet some more people was really nice. And also I use my pocket all the time. So win-win for me again. <laughs> so how much did I do in 2021? Let's add it up. In 2021, I made 21 public videos, 4 Patreon videos, 5 dresses, 1 corset, 3 petticoats, 1 corset cover, 1 set of hip pads, 2 bodices slash shirt waists, 1 overskirt, 2 skirts, 2 corselets, 1 bolero, 1 cloak, and 1 pocket. I also altered 2 hats, painted 1 jacket, altered two wedding gowns and two bridesmaid gowns, and I also made one baby. So, more than I thought I did. <laughs> so at this point in the video, I was originally planning on giving you a little glimpse of my analytics so you could see how many views I got, how many watch hours there were, what I made in revenue, but this video is getting very bloated, so I think I might have to save that for next time. Assuming that you're interested in seeing that. If you are, let me know. All right, so quick plans for the video. After the analytics video, I'm planning on doing one more current project right now, and then I'm going to try and get through all the backlog videos from 2020. I think I have four videos from that year that I have to edit. So once I get through those, I'm going to try and focus on kind of developing my own little niche. I like doing the half scale work. I like making projects based off of the media I enjoy, and I would like to try and experiment with combining the two. So I'm hoping to make some half scale heroines this year, and hopefully you'll enjoy those videos. Unfortunately, my camera um, sustained some damage at one point during the holidays, and I actually needed to get, uh, I had to get it repaired. I had to take it to like a camera repair shop. Parts had to be ordered and replaced. It was a whole thing. Um, and that, eat up most of my savings from Patreon and YouTube. So that's, that's fun. Um, but I am going to start saving up. So hopefully once I'm able to get through the backlog of footage, I will have saved up enough money to start making some fun projects. All right. So I need to go and pick up the baby for my parents. Uh, that's pretty much all I have time for today. So I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse of the past and the plans for the future. And I really hope for just all of the best things for all of you in 2022. Thank you to my patrons who made the second half of last year possible because otherwise who knows what my channel would have looked like. Here's to 2022. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey Maisie, we made it through 2021. High five. <laughs> Good girl.